Good morning. First off, I just want to tell you something. I know that I've been keeping you updated on all of this video recording um, and how it's been going, but I really want you all to understand that it takes so many people to do this. So first off, Ken and Sue, who run the soundboard and the computer, thank you so much. And also Steve Allard, thank you for all the knowledge that you have passed down to me. I am your Padawan and you are my Jedi teacher. Um, buddy, thank you for being ready uh, at a moment's notice to help me out with these. Um, anytime I have a, a project going, you're, you're up and ready to go. And also um, with the music, I, I just wanna thank you for always being available and ready for that. Now, for today's message, I've invited a couple of kids from my youth group. Uh, one of them is my son, Duffy. Uh, he was part of last week's message, uh, the joke about, or, or the, the story about forgiveness when he tried to bypass the punishment portion. So he's going to be on, on uh, with me sharing the message for today. And then also his very good friend, Nolan, who's also uh, part of my youth group. Uh, interesting story about these two um, amazing young men is that they grew up together and they started off in my mother-in-law uh, Sharon's daycare. And these two boys have been best friends ever since before they even knew the word friend, uh, let alone to understand what best friend meant. Uh, so what's, what's unique about them is they both love the Lord. They both uh, have a, a, a heart to serve. Uh, neither one of them are the next American Idol, but yet they are always helping us out on the church service. They're always uh, willing to learn new songs, new, learn new things, whatever uh, the body needs, uh, the church body, they're always doing it. Uh, as a matter of fact, right now, one of them is holding a microphone so that I could speak into uh, the camera, and the other one is is helping out with the shoot. They're just always willing to do everything or anything uh, to, to get this message out. Now, today's message is a little bit... Um, about friends and, and how they get into sticky situations because their faith uh, is something they hold so near and dear that they would rather please God than to please man. And so um, today's going to be an, a great message with the help of Nolan and Duffy. Uh, so let's, uh, before we get to the message, Let's listen to one of these songs where they've put so much work in with their uh, worship teacher, Buddy, and basically they know and understand that they are singing these songs to God, and it's and we get the opportunity to join them and, and, and raise our praises and worship up to God.
Now, the reason I invited these two knuckleheads today is because I was studying in a book that actually talks about um, a couple of best friends. And these friends are friends with a, uh, a common goal, which is serving God. Duffy, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Good. Nolan, how are you doing? Good, how are you? Good, thank you. Um, Duffy, what have you been doing during this quarantine? I've been fixing up like my bike and st- stuff I haven't been being able to do before the quarantine. Cool. Let's fi- so you you already knew how to fix your bike or you learned and, and are yeah. practicing? Yeah, I've been learning. How many bikes have you actually fixed now? Two. Two. Cool. Nolan, what have you been doing? Um, I've been getting up and actually going on runs with Duffy. Um, and I've been working on sports and I've been trying to get closer with God too. So cool. So so you and and Duffy have been running. Yes. How how often are you guys running? Uh, well, for the past two weeks, <laughs> we haven't been running that much since like really busy with school and stuff. But then, okay. like before, we used to get up like every day and have a repetition. So okay, how many miles were you guys running? Two. Two miles. Wow. And walking home one. And walking one mile. Oh, for your cool down. That's cool. Uh, <laughs> Um, Nolan, can you give me in a, in and say a list of uh, one through five? One being the the most, and five being the least. What do you miss um, of life before quarantine, or or what what is it that you miss that you could be doing right now? Had it had you if we weren't say in a quarantine. Um, well, my top five are, like, the first one would be just, like, getting together as a church family. Yeah. And being just together, like, Mm -hmm. after this quarantine. And the second is actually getting together as, like, kids. Yeah. And actually just hanging out, which now we can't do because Mm -hmm. of the quarantine. And following up on the subject of getting together as kids, um, our youth group. We would like to get back to that. And my fourth one would be working on sports, like getting out. Like I play in Sacramento, you know, you know that I like to go out there because it's like my sanctuary almost. Yeah. Apart from just everything else. Kind of clears your head a little bit. Yeah. And five is not really my favorite thing, but it's like part of my daily routine is school. I like to go back to school. You want to go back to school? Yeah. Okay. Duffy? You got a, You have a list? Uh, yeah, so my first one would probably be I miss the youth group. Okay. I miss all my like, close friends. Uh-huh. And second, I probably miss going to, like, going with him and some other friends to, like, Casa Lupe or something, just going yeah. to stores and hanging out. Yeah. Um, I also miss school. I miss, I don't miss schoolwork, but I miss <laughs> um, the people at school. I miss some of my teachers. Cool. And I, I guess I kind of miss the restaurants. The restaurants. restaurants. Yeah. Well, I, I'm, I'm with you guys that I miss you guys going to school. I mean, uh, and <laughs> I, miss, I, I, I miss the restaurants too. I, um, it would be nice to have um, that, that fellowship that comes with going with friends to, to eat at a restaurant. Um, um, Duffy, what are some of the things that you have actually enjoyed with this quarantining at home? Um, well, like I said before, I like learning how to, like, kind of be a handyman on my bike and everything. Yeah. Um, I like, I don't know, it's kind of like a cool down time. Yeah. Uh, I can get all my homework done and then just chillax. Um, I like just basically learning all in all. I like learning, I've been learning how to cook some stuff and... What's your favorite thing to cook? Probably black bean burgers. Black bean burgers, and they're and they're pretty good too. <laughs> Nolan, how about you? Same question. Um, some things I like about quarantine are I actually get to try new stuff. Like earlier, like I said, I play in Sacramento. Yeah. Most of the time, I don't really have much time to do anything. Uh huh. And so, it, this just gives me the time to do more things than I used to be able to do. Yeah. And uh, just one more thing would be just getting all the schoolwork done. 
Yeah, that's you, that's a problem I had earlier. I just so you and you like with this time that we've been at home that you've been allowed um, more time to actually get your schoolwork done. Yeah. Um, are you finding that it's taking you less time at home to get it done than you would say in a day of schoolwork? In a day of going to school, you're getting more work done now. You're more productive now. Yeah. But there are things that you guys still miss about school, even though you're more productive, and even though you guys get to uh, do things that um, you guys weren't able to do during school, you guys still miss the social life yep. that comes yep. with school, the interaction with teachers. Uh, some, do you guys see them as some, some of your mentors and, mm-hmm. and some of your closest friends, right? Um, Here's a, here's a difficult question that I think that the people at home would like to hear from you guys um, and, and, and what your guys' thoughts are as far as um, are you guys in any way concerned or uh, fearful of contracting COVID-19? Uh, Nolan, I'll let, I'll let you answer first. Um, actually, I am not scared of contracting COVID-19 because even if it gets me really sick and I eventually like do maybe pass, uh-huh. I know I'm going to a better place. So I'd be okay with it. or I don't think I will get it because there's not many cases around town and, um, well, reports have shown that they don't really go to younger, healthier kids. And if I do contract it, I believe I'm staying healthy enough. I think I could kind of fight it off. And like what Nolan said, if I do pass, I know I'm going to I'm going to a better place. So fear is not something that you guys are even worried about, right? So you guys are using... Um, what's not very common, and that is common sense. You're taking the information that we know to be facts, right? And you're applying it to your life. And what are the facts that we know? You know, you, you, you made mention to it, there aren't very many cases in, in Gridley. There aren't very many cases in Butte County. Um, and you guys are like of the healthiest group in the world, right? Yeah. You guys are very active. You eat healthy. Uh, Duffy, you, you're eating black bean burgers. You're not even putting that much meat into your body, which is harder to break down. Um, Nolan, you're staying active in soccer. And um, and not only that, you guys are staying active in the word. And so you guys are close to God. And, and, and you guys are saying, even if the worst or what the world says the worst could happen to me happens to me, we actually know where we're going to go. Right. Um, so, is that what gives you the most peace, Duffy? Yeah, I would think so. Like, knowing that if I do pass or something, knowing that it's going to be better or that I'm going to a better place or, like, knowing that I might or it's the probabilities of me getting it are slim. Mm-hmm. I guess it kind of gives me some peace. No one. Yeah, I would agree with Duffy. Like, yeah. Going to a better place, that gives me so much peace because I don't have the fear and yep. just like the tension where I don't have to worry all the time. Yep. We're just, we're chill, right? Yeah. Like, like Duffy said, we're just chillaxing. Chillax. <laughs>
So I want to tell you boys about um, some friends from the Bible. Uh, I'm going to take us back to the Old Testament. Um, uh, one of my favorite books because it's an easy read. It's very interesting. Um, it's, it's, it's a short book. So we're going to go to Daniel. Uh, and, and one of my favorite things about Daniel is that it talks about four friends. And they basically go... Um, to Babylon because they're from Judah and and the priests and, and all the high people from Judah actually got captured and enslaved and they were taken to Babylon by King Nebuchadnezzar. Um, so while in um, Babylon, they're asked to basically go against um, what they believe in. They're asked to do some things that go against what they would normally do. And it's not that these guys are bad slaves. It's not like they're defying. But by their choices, if they choose to go against what this ruler, King Nebuchadnezzar, asks them to do, it can actually get them thrown into prison or killed. Um, so these four friends um, are more concerned with living a life for God and serving God as they are pleasing man. They would rather please God and upset man than to upset God and please man. So um, no one... I would like you to read um, from Daniel chapter 1, verse 3 to uh, 17. I'm going to have you read out of my Bible. Then the king instructed as Venice, the master of the eunuchs, Enix or Unix. Unix. To bring some of the children to Israel and some of the king's descendants and some of the nobles. Young men in whom there was no blemish, but good looking, gifted in all wisdom, possessing knowledge, and quick to understand, who had the ability to had, who had ability to serve the king's palace, and whom they might teach the language and literature of the Chaldeans, and the king appointed for them daily provision, provision of king's delicacies and all the wine which he drank, and three years of training for them so that at the end of the time, of that time, they might serve before the king. Now from among those of the sons of Ju Judah were Daniel. Hananiah, Mi Mishael, and Az Azariah. To them the chief of the eunuchs gave names. He gave Daniel the name of Belteshazzar, who Han Hanai, Sh Shad Shadrach, Shadrach, and to Mishael, and Meshach and to Azariah Abednego. But Daniel proposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's delicacies, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the chief of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Now God had brought Daniel into the favor and goodwill of the chief of the eunuchs. And the chief of the eunuchs said to Daniel, I fear my lord the king who has appointed your food and drink. For why should he see your faces looking worse than the young men who are your age? Then you would endanger my head before the king. So Daniel said to 
the steward of whom the chief of the eunuchs had set over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azaria. Please test your servants for 10 days and let them give the vegetables to eat and water to drink. Then let our appearance be examined before you. And the appearance, the appearance of young men who eat the portion of the king's delicacies and as you see fit to deal with your servants. So he consented with them in the matter and tested them 10 days. And at the end of the 10 days, their features appeared better and fatter in flesh than all the young men who ate the portion of the king's delicacies. Thus, the steward took away their portion of delicacies and the wine that they were to drink and gave them vegetables. So, Daniel and his friends, um, not only when they moved, when they were taken to um, Babylon, were they asked to they were they were enslaved and they were um, be, Nebuchadnezzar wanted these wise men, so these priests and such, so that they could be kind of like his counsel. Um, it later talks about how Nebuchadnezzar had magicians on staff, uh, astrologers, sorcerers. And that way, um, any time he had question, he could basically go to these, um, his staff and say, let's figure this out. So he wanted these people, he wanted the smartest of the people to learn the language and um, follow their traditions. So adopt these new traditions. And if you, if you can imagine that if we can get our leaders to change, then we, the people, will follow our leaders, right? And, and, and do that change with them. So it's, the onus is upon the leaders to stick to the truth, what they know, what they know to be true, what they know to be pleasing to God, and, and do that like uh, Daniel and his friends. Now his friends' names are um, Mishael and Azariah and Hananiah. Um, yeah, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Um, those names are a little bit harder. Those are their actual names, but they gave them Babylonian names. Um, like Daniel, like you'd mentioned, Belteshazzar. And the other friends, it's one of my easiest ways to remember that. It's, it just, it rolls. Um, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. So I just, I've, I've always remembered that one just because I say it together. Like, I, I don't know which one is different. I don't know wh what they look like, but I always say Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. Just in that way. Kind of the same way I memorized the four Gospels, right? I just say it together, and I always remember it. Yeah. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You know, and, and it's in that order. And it's just, so. Um, but I, uh, it is a little bit harder to remember their actual names. But. Mm -hmm. So these friends, um, and they're kind of looking to Daniel, and they're saying, what do we do? They're basically offering us some of the world's best delicacies in the, you know, that, that are delicious. I bet it smelled amazing. But one of the things that they were offering them was swine. And um, the Jews did not eat pig um, because it had the cloven hoof, but it doesn't chew the cud. Chewing the cud means having, having different stomachs where you're able to uh, regurgitate that grass that they eat and chew, it, chew on it again, which was a Levitical law, which meant that they could not eat it. So uh, Daniel and his friends did not eat pig. And so that's what they were offering them. And, and they said, you know what, don't give me that because it goes against what I believe in. And I would rather do what's pleasing to God than do what's pleasing to man. So they said, instead of giving me the pig, 
I want you to give me the food that you feed the pig. I want to eat that <laughs> because that's vegetables. That's, you know. Um, so the test was, okay, if I do this for you and you turn your back and you say, I don't want all this wine. I don't want all these delicious foods. You're not going to be as healthy. And the king, he wants you healthy. He wants you smart. He wants you so witty so that he can call upon you. And instead, this guy who um, is a eunuch, he's trying to say, um, I'm going to get in trouble if you don't eat this stuff, if you're not healthy. And when, it, when he comes back in 10 days, he says, wait a minute, you guys look better. You guys are healthier kind of the same thing that we were talking about today and one of your favorite things is um, you're learning how to make black bean burgers which is a meat replacement now I love me some steak don't get me wrong and I love a juicy hamburger but that doesn't mean that your black bean burger isn't a whole bunch better for me right? and it's delicious um, so later King Nebuchadnezzar in all of his uh, wisdom, he has a dream, right? And um, he has a dream that puzzles him. And so what he does is he has all these people that I told you. He has all these people on staff, his council, basically, of magicians, astrologers. So people that can read the stars and tell futures and such. Um sorcerers and he says he calls them all to his his small council and he says I had a dream and I'm not going to tell you my dream but I want you to tell me my dream and interpret it and he was basically afraid of he knew that if he told them the dream they could come up with something that it meant, right? Somehow they could come up with uh, a story that would follow along with what his, his dream meant. And so he didn't um, tell them what the dream was and they, they were really scared. They were trying to figure it out. They basically told him, because how can we tell you what the dream is? Just tell us what your dream is and we will translate it for you. We will tell you what your dream means. And he says, no, I'm not going to do that. I am testing. So he was basically testing the sorcerers for sorcery. He was testing the astrologers in astrology and he was testing the magicians in magic. And he says, if you guys don't answer me, I'm going to kill everybody, all these, these people that I hold and that I'm holding on staff, because why am I holding you on staff if nobody can help me? So Daniel hears this. Daniel and his friends are going to die unless somebody, which Daniel and his friends weren't even invited to, to be part of that council. He just said, hey, what's, what's the ruckus? I hear that we're going to die if somebody doesn't give him the answer. So Daniel prays to God. And God reveals the dream to him and what it means. So he goes before King Nebuchadnezzar and he tells Nebuchadnezzar his dream and he tells him what it means. Um, so then his four friends are, are moved from not even being part of the council to actually being on top. They just bypassed everybody. They bypassed Babylonian people. They are now at held into the highest regard in Babylon. So these are Jewish friends who stuck to their guns, who only did what they believed in, and now they're at the top. Now, we've heard a similar story like this, right? Do you guys know who was enslaved and moved to the top? Joseph. Joseph, exactly. Um, so, um, these guys, they get promoted. And um, they end up later coming under attack by some of the of some of the other some of the king's other followers other council members that basically got bypassed and they got the king to um, 
basically write a law that meant that everybody would worship the king on this day. And so they all were supposed to bow down to the king, right? To King Nebuchadnezzar. But Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego could not do that because they could only bow down to one God. Mm -hmm. They can only follow one master. So everybody bows down except these three friends. They said, no way. This infuriated the king. It infuriated the king um, to the point where, like we talked about, if you don't comply, if you don't do what you're told, even though it goes against what you believe in, there's two punishments. Prison. Prison or death. Prison or death. So Duffy, if you would mind, if you wouldn't mind reading um, out of chapter 3, verse 19 through 25. Nebuchadnezzar was so furious that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that his face became distorted with rage. He commanded that the furnace be heated seven times hotter than usual. Then he, or then he ordered, ordered that some of the strongest men in his army to blind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them into the blazing furnace. So they tied them up and threw them into the furnace, fully dressed in their pants, turbans, robes, and other garments. And because the king... <clears throat> In his anger, and he de had demanded such a hot fire in the furnace, the flames killed the soldiers as they threw the three men in. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, secure securely tied, fell into the roaring flames. But suddenly, Nebuchadnezzar jumped up in amazement <clears throat> and excla exclaimed to his advisors, Didn't we tie up three men and throw them into the furnace? Yes, your majesty, we certainly did, they replied. And 25. Oh. Then, or, look, Nebuchadnezzar shouted, I see four men unbound walking around in the fire unharmed, and the fourth looks like a god. So in, in, in mine, he's reading out of NLT, and in, I'm re, I read out of New King James, and verse 25 says, Look, he answered, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. So, um... If you guys could imagine... A fire, uh, uh, the furnace is set at a at a temperature, right? And he gets it so hot that the people, the guards who take the three men and put them in the furnace, they died from the heat. But the three men that they they that they put in the furnace didn't die, so. If that fire was so hot that it could kill two men, why didn't it kill all five? It should have killed all five. So, not only that, once they're inside the fire, here's King Nebuchadne Nebuchadnezzar and he says, wait a minute. So they, they fell in and then pretty soon they're standing up. And there's not three, but there's four. And your version says there's a form like a god. My version says there is a form like the son of God. So who do we, who is it that was protecting them? Jesus. 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 Now, I started off this story, or I started off this message with, where were we reading? Old Testament. <laughs> 
When did Jesus come into the Bible? New Testament. New Testament. New Testament. But we know that he's always been there. Mm -hmm. Just like now. So boys, you who are best friends, who've been best friends for a really long time, the bar set pretty high. Mm -hmm. You both have something in common though, right? And it's the same thing that Daniel and his three friends had which is serving God. And it's that peace that comes about you, right? It's the same peace that Meshach, Chadrach, and Abednego had walking into the furnace, which is, I'm not afraid, but even if I walk into the furnace, I'm not afraid because of where I'm going to go. Now, that doesn't make you like an adrenaline junkie, right? That doesn't mean if I die, I'm, I'm going to go to heaven. Let's go see if I can't jump off this building, right? Okay. But what is the one thing that that does mean? That we have to live our life for what God intended it to be, which is why you guys are here today. There aren't too many kids who would openly talk about their faith, openly talk about the love that God has for them, and the love that you guys have for God. So this book, I would, you know, I think we've read it. To, uh, Daniel, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure we read it in our morning, in our Sunday Bible study, at some point. But it's only 12 chapters long. I challenge you to, and I challenge you guys at home, read these 12 chapters. It's a fantastic read. It's an easy read. Um, it's a complete story. It starts off at one place, and and it's going to make you want to ask questions. It's going to make you try to look for more answers. But. Um, you know, we have the luxury of having this story that we can read. And it kind of kind of gives us, like, courage, right? Yeah. I'm going to go live like Meshach, Shadrach, Abednego, and Daniel, yeah. and I'm going to go be bold, right? <laughs> because we just read that story. Yeah. It's like you, uh, after watching an awesome soccer game. What's the first thing you want to do? I want to be like him. I want to go grab my soccer ball and I'm going to go start training. I'm going to go start practicing. Yeah. And we're like, okay, we just read this cool story about being bold. I want to go out into, out of these doors and I'm going to go be bold <laughs> and lead people. Lead people to God through my actions, through going against the governing powers that are asking me to do things that I know are wrong. <laughs> Nolan, can you imagine a ruler in this day and age making you do things that you don't want to do that could get you thrown into jail if you do them because of your faith? Um. Basically, what I mean is let's take ourselves and put ourselves in their shoes or sandals. <laughs> And apply it to today. Is there something that you feel that you should be doing for God that there's somebody telling you, I can't? And does that frustrate you? And does that make you want to be bold? Yeah. There, like, I know that um, praying in school, yeah. it's not, and I know in our community, it, it's not that we can't do it, but we read in, or, or, or watch in the media that we're not supposed to. Mm -hmm. But have you guys ever felt the need that you wanted, that you wished that there was a, a time where you guys could come together and pray together in school or, or be open? Yeah. Like, like bring your Bible to school day. I know that a lot of people love doing that. Mm -hmm.
think I am weak And you say I am hell When I am falling short And when I don't belong Oh, you say I am yours And I believe Oh, I believe What you say So boys, do you think that because the people governing us tell us to do something that we um, should turn our back on God? No? Mm-hmm. No. No. We shouldn't, right? We should, we should always do what we know God wants us to do. Which is, what is it that God wants us to do? Spread the word Spread in. the word in. Tell us, or tell other people, mm-hmm. and lead them to God. And how do we do that? Uh, using the Bible, spreading the word, like introducing it to them. Like opening up to them. About opening up to them. God. Telling yes. your story, kind of. Kind of like what you guys are doing today. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like telling people how we came in contact with God and like how we got a relationship with him. Yeah. So there are kids who are stressed out. Mm-hmm. In this, in this quarantine. There are kids who are frustrated. But I look at you two, and I don't see frustration. I see peace. So, it doesn't matter what the government or the world tells you. Because you get to still have a relationship with your God, right? You get to have a relationship with your bringer of peace and hope which is Christ so we as a believing body 
should do what is pleasing to God and not necessarily what is pleasing to men. Right? So these four friends, like I said before, they weren't bad slaves. They weren't bad um, citizens. They were just going to do what they knew God wanted them to do. Which God wants you what you just said. Spread the word. Live a life that others can look at you and say, that man, or young man, is living a godly life. He is a nice boy. He lives a life where he's not mean, but he has a peace about him that it's not arrogance. It's just, I know what my future holds. So if you know what your future holds, it makes you not afraid of the life we're living now. Because some of our life isn't going to be um, unicorns and rainbows, right? It's going to be a little bit rocky. We're going to mess up. Mm -hmm. So even this time, not that anybody, any of you messed up, but we are living in a time that's a little bit stressful. Mm -hmm. But we don't lose faith because we know that at the end, we're all going to be okay. Mm -hmm. Those who believe will be okay. You boys will be okay. Uh, interesting, um, I had a thought. Our forefathers, do you know how our forefathers um, ended up here in the 13 colonies? What they were running away from? Government. Oh, <laughs> Government telling them, you can't pray, you can't believe in, in a God the way you do. We want you to believe in the way we believe. Mm -hmm. And they said, uh, we've got to find a different place yeah. to go do this. It's like, no, I can't. No, I can't do that. Yeah. Government, you cannot tell me how to pray to my God. You cannot tell me that I can't do this. And I think that we are in a unique situation where we are in a free land, but through fear, a lot of what we know to be the way we uh, spread the word is being told we can't do that. So we've got to be like Daniel and his four friends and figure out a way to spread the good news so that people have that same peace that we do. Boys, I want to thank you for, for coming and uh, doing this Sunday service with me. I appreciate that. Um, I, I, too, cannot wait to get back to uh, youth group. I miss it more than probably you guys do, but um, as soon as we can, we're going to. As soon as we can, we're going to, uh, even if we have to be bold, <laughs> even if we have to be courageous and suffer consequences. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just, we give thanks. We give thanks for your word. We give thanks for your messengers. And we give thanks for these stories that give us hope and confidence and courage to serve you, to live a life that is pleasing to you, and to quit seeking after things of the world. We ask that you give us strength and courage to be bold that others could see peace in our lives. And we ask that you would continue to guide us through your word, that we may have more opportunities to open up your word, that we have more opportunities to seek a relationship with your son, who is the way, who is the way that leads back to heaven, that leads to you, Father. Lord, I give thanks for all that you do for us, for all that you've given us. Lord, we ask for all of these things in your son's holy and precious name. Amen. 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 Go in peace. Serve the Lord. And don't forget, um, walk for life.
Um, watch our, our video on, on YouTube or on Facebook to figure out what that walk for life is. I know that me and my family, we're going to do our virtual walk and we're going to make our donation to uh, Caring for Women. Thank you all. I love you. Can't wait to see you again. Watch for some more videos uh, on our YouTube. I plan on posting some more videos this week. Um, I have been asked that I should um, be connecting with you guys more often, so that is my plan. And I'm hoping to go live on some of that so that I could have some interaction with you. Um, so look for that. Watch for it on Facebook. Watch for it on YouTube. Thank you all.